Clinton, that's the other big story this morning. WikiLeaks has released what appears to be transcripts of paid speeches by Hillary Clinton to Goldman Sachs for the series of data dumps over the weekend. The documents were part of the group's latest release of emails allegedly hacked from the personal account of campaign chair John Podesta. They may have not been, uh, they have not been independently authenticated by NBC News, and the Clinton campaign and U.S. intelligence officials have blamed Russia for hacking the emails. One email claims to show Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign polling about Obama's ties to the Muslim faith hours after her surprise victory in the January 8, 2008 New Hampshire primary. After Obama's surprise victory. So when but Hillary lost in Iowa in 2008, came in third place to Barack Obama and behind John Edwards, yeah, this is Podesta, who was uh, copied on an email dated Wednesday, January 9th, Mika. Yeah, okay. In so which the longtime Clinton, Clinton campaign strategist Paul Begala is discussing a poll that tested attack lines against Obama. One of the questions in the poll asked whether voters would be more or less likely to support Senator Obama if they knew that, quote, Obama's father was a Muslim and Obama grew up among Muslims in the world's most populous Islamic country. As for an explanation, Paul Begala told the New York Post he was polling to defend Obama. What? No, 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 actually, this was the day after Obama beat. That's so bad. Hillary Clinton. I'm, uh, uh, that's, that's. He says that was a draft poll questionnaire that tested potential right wing attacks on Obama to help prepare to defend um, him. I'm sorry, Alex. I'm sorry. Was that poll? The poll also included suggested questions on Obama's use of cocaine. Uh, question is patriotism for not covering his heart during the national anthem. Uh, also... and, and Mark Halperin, this was the day after the Iowa loss. Hillary Clinton lost our New Hampshire. Was this the day after New Hampshire? Okay, the day after New Hampshire. One, one of two things is true about Paul Begala. Either he's not telling the truth about the poll, or he is one of the most forward-looking people <laughs> in Democratic <laughs> politics. And even as even as he first. was helping Hillary Clinton fight to win the nomination, he was thinking ahead to the, a general election where his candidate would lose. And well, and Barack you, you, Obama you remember actually, Barack Obama got so angry at them with their whisper campaign on him being a Muslim or coming from a Muslim country, the Muslim father. Remember that scene on the tarmac where he was yelling at Hillary Clinton? I do. It was featured in the book Game Change about that campaign. And <laughs> the, the I've never seen him put, I've never seen him put his book before. That was, that was very subtly. I love that. Uh, also in the WikiLeaks hack are transcripts purportedly showing remarks Hillary Clinton made to Goldman Sachs employees during three appearances in 2013, touching on a number of topics, including the war in Syria. Clinton allegedly told the crowd that the best way to take on the Assad regime is as covertly as possible. My view was to interver intervene as covertly as possible for Americans to intervene. We used to be much better at this than we are now. Now, you know, everyone can't help themselves. They have to go out and tell their friendly reporters and someone else. Whoa. Look what we're doing, and I want credit for it. She, and all the she's rest talking of about it. Barack Obama there. Speaking on Russia. Unbelievably. Clinton purportedly said, I would love it if we could continue to build a more positive relationship with Russia. We would like to see Putin be less defensive toward a relationship with the United States so that we could work together on some issues. And Clinton also allegedly touched on the 2008 financial crisis, discussing the root causes with Goldman employees seeming to avoid criticism of the banks. I think that there's a lot that could have been avoided in terms of both misunderstanding and really politicizing what happened with greater transparency, with greater openness on all sides. You know what happened. How did it happen? How do we prevent it from happening? And finally, in a separate email from 2012, an employee at the Clinton Foundation allegedly told several aides that Cutter wanted five minutes to meet with former President Bill Clinton in New York to give him one million dollars as a birthday present. The email goes on to say that Cutter is looking for suggestions from the Clinton Foundation to place its 20 million dollars gathered to invest in Haiti. Mark Halpern, a lot to digest here. Uh, a lot to digest. What are, what are your thoughts first before we go around Sam. the table? Well, there's lots in there that confirm the suspicions that people have about how the Clinton enterprise operates. 
there's a lot uh, of things that are kind of medium grade. I think just as a political reality, part of what's holding Where'd Mark decide go? which one to seize on. Yeah, uh, well, let's talk about Russia first, since we have you here. Hillary Clinton in 2013, first of all, obviously criticizing Barack Obama, who leaked, and the administration would leak the terrorists that they killed that day and had leaked that he would look over lists of what terrorists to kill that particular day in the 2012 campaign. But talk about Russia, which is absolutely fascinating that even in 2013, she wanted a close relationship with well, Vladimir Putin. Well, what's interesting then and what it tells us is the pace and the degree to which U.S.-Russian relations have deteriorated. This is actually one of the big developments in the world that we've gone from an a difficult but okay relationship to something that even now the Russians are saying it's the worst it's been since early you know, the worst moments of the Cold War with the idea of US Russian military confrontations or con uh, coming into contact either in Syria or in Europe is not yeah. uh, off the table so it just shows it's, there's nothing bad about what she was saying what it says though to me it's a real snapshot two years ago right. three years now three years ago how, how quickly things have changed but I don't think there's anything in this that caused problems for her like the previous ones which talked about open borders, free trade, and all that. There she ran into trouble between what she was saying privately and what she's been now saying publicly. And we've got I don't Sam, see anything here. We've got Sam Stein's picture back uh, out of Washington. Sam, $1 million uh, as a birthday gift. I know you have a lot of friends, a lot of That's your rich friends big. from Dartmouth yeah. that come <laughs> in and give you a $1 million True. for your birthday presents. Yeah. But for That's most formidable. politicians, you know, just from a, a self-described redneck from Arkansas, getting a $1 million check from Cutter for his birthday, that's big stuff. I call the $1 million gift club the second tier friends. Uh, first tier, you're <laughs> going to five million. Just how I grade my that's friends. Sick. Uh, I mean, this, uh, as, Mark, as Mark said, this confirms sort of the worst uh, the portraits of the Clintons and how they operated out of office and it raises obvious questions about why they were accepting this money now you know there were charitable purposes that went along with the Clinton Foundation but of course it came with a conflict of interest I would say uh, we need to correct I think we should correct what we were talking about with respect to the polling it wasn't the Clinton campaign that did those pollings about Obama and cocaine use and Muslim faith it was a group called Progressive Media USA now Progressive Media USA was an outside government outfit uh, Democratic uh, allied outfit in 2008 that was tasked with essentially looking up the vulnerabilities of each perspective. So this candidate was John, John, John Podesta and John, it was Paul Begala. Paul and Begala it was a group called and John Podesta. Media USA. No, no, yeah, I, I, I know. It was the poll was done by Progressive Media USA. A guy named Tom Matzi, who um, you know, he's an operative around town. He's in clean energy now. But this was not a Clinton campaign. I mean, poll. come on, Sam. It was in the no, heat. It, really it was wasn't. in the heat of an ugly, ugly campaign. I'm this was being, even. I'm this was being even. Very honest about this it. is even. It was a group raised this is USA. even before racism charges uh, started begin, being leveled between the two campaigns. This was uh, regardless. It was, it was said. It was said that it was a Clinton campaign. Poll. That is factually not true. Okay, okay. Yeah. So would it be safe to say that Paul Begala and, um, mm -hmm. and John Podesta were not talking about Barack Obama uh, and his Muslim ties for the benefit of a general election campaign against Mitt Romney in the midst well, of a nasty know, fight? What we know is that Mark Penn did famously bring up the cocaine use in an MSNBC hit. There were subtle references to Obama's foreignness. But I think it's objectively true that they didn't push it as a major issue at all in the 2008 campaign. What progressive media was doing was checking whether it would be a huge vulnerability for Obama once he got to the general election. No, they which weren't. I should add. No, no, yes, they, weren't. no, which I no add. they weren't. This is a fairly mundane campaign in, in operation in, Jan here. in January of 2008, Paul Begala the, the was idea. not asking about Barack Obama's Muslim identity because he was concerned about a November election against Mitt the Romney. The idea was to see if he would be a vulnerable general election candidate and push that. Sam, narrative. are you really being? Are you are you saying this with a straight face? Did they teach you this at Dartmouth to say this yes. with a straight face? Well, I listen. They're you, very we, good. You read it as if can it I, was a Clinton campaign poll. I'm correcting that and saying okay, it was you not can a correct campaign poll. that and say it is a distinction without a difference in the midst nah, of one of the ugliest Democratic battles in can recent I, I, memory. Can I just jump in? It's a big difference. Could you jump in first of all? No, I, no, I, it's really not. Okay. It's there first, is no difference. First of all, the 
let's also always asterisk these are not that these are not true these are Russian hacks oh, okay. and I, I genuinely believe if you went into the emails of any political campaign and right. did a deep dive once again not excusing any of that well that, should we should we not report on no, this? no we should absolutely report because it, it but, sounds but, like you're excusing no 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 I'm not excusing. Let, let, <clears throat> I am just saying I would guarantee I would bet anything that on any political campaign that's ever been done private going back so they all do it but that's not even a question. No, that's what you're saying. You're saying they all do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they a million all, dollar present. Did, did that did go, that go in his first why, room? No, that went to his foundation. How do you yeah. know that? Because because I, because, I, 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 I because Reuters reported this on I think Friday or Saturday and said that they couldn't confirm that it wasn't Five a personal gift. Okay, well, for a million dollars. I would like I would like to know that also. I also just want to. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.